Hi boys and girls, welcome to today's art lesson. Today we are going to be traveling to the country of Panama and we're going to be learning about something called a mola, which we see a lot in all of the countries in Central America, but it primarily came out of Panama. So before we start, I want to show you my shirt. This is a favorite shirt of my students at school, regular teacher, art teacher, right? So those of those students who are watching who are from KIPP, here I am. Do the dab. Okay. So what I want to talk to you about today is the mola. And the mola is representative of what we learned about line, right? Because we're, we're talking about line and obviously you can see there are a lot of lines in this project. So we're going to continue the theme of line, but we're going to use it in a different way. The last time that we worked with line, we did line inside of our hand designs. Do you remember that? Well, now we're going to do our line designs inside of found objects, and I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. But first, I want to tell you where these came from. In Panama, in the villages in Panama, people used to do body paint, and they would paint their faces with geometric shapes all over. And eventually, when the country began to get settled, people started to change from painting their body to adding this to fabric, painting it as pictures, making pillows out of sewn molas that look like this with different types of appliques and threads. And they're normally very colorful, although understanding that we're all home, we might not have all these colors, that's okay because I also saw some that were done with just two colors or just one color and white. You could do it black and white. You could do it with a pencil or a pen. So we're gonna talk about the ways to do this project. So here's what we need to get started, our materials. I went around the house and I found objects to trace. So the bird here came from this. This is one of those um, things you put on the table. It's a trivet to put hot plates on, okay? I did not do the middle sections because that was a little bit too much to do. What I did was I took the bird, I turned it upside down like this, I laid it in place like a pattern, and I traced it. So this is one of the items you could use, but you could go around the house and find a bunch of different things. For example, I found this little turtle. A lot of time in molas they used animals animal designs. This turtle kind of has a flat belly, so it was easy to trace around. But you could also use a coaster. You know, something you put your glass on. That makes a nice square shape. You could turn it into a diamond. You don't have to use anything fancy. You could use a spoon. That's kind of cool, right? What if you used a spoon? That would be neat. I also found objects that we were using here in our classroom. I just did scissors and tape, and then I outlined them over and over and over again with different color. Sorry if you hear that truck, my window is open. I probably should have closed my window, I'm sorry. So you can use found objects. So I used this tape dispenser, and I used a pair of kid scissors. So I'm gonna give you a few minutes to go around your house and start to look for items that you can trace. Some good ideas might be cookie cutters, because they already have shapes. Now, you might have to ask your mom, your dad, your grandma, your aunt, or your uncle to help you. You don't want to bring anything that's going to be bigger than your paper. It should be kind of small because you want to be able to trace all your lines around it, right? You don't want it to be, this is sort of big. I think this is a little big. I like the smaller shapes. So as you go around and you look around your house and you find the shapes that you're interested in, come and bring them back, and then I'm going to tell you what art materials we need. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to go. Zaire, Chloe, do you have everything you need? Awesome, okay, so now let's move on. The other materials that we're going to need is a pencil, of course, because we always start with a pencil in case we need to erase. If you don't have a pencil, that's okay. Lots of students have shown me their work and it's done in marker and pen. That's okay. I have my crayons and of course I have my markers. 
Today we won't need scissors or glue unless you're tracing those. Hey, you could trace a glue bottle too. I didn't even think of that. So now I need to find my pencil. Every single time I lose my pencil, where is my... Is that... Mrs. Jones, come on. Okay, so today I've decided for your example, I'm going to trace a spoon. What I'm going to do to get started, I'm going to put my paper, my plain paper over top so that we can do this together. Okay. And I'm going to take my spoon. Now, you have to hold it really still and it's really hard when you're using an object that's not totally flat. See how that's not totally flat? You might need somebody to help you like your mom, your brother, your sister, somebody who's at the house. I'm going to hold my spoon. Oh, I hope I can hold it like this. And I'm going to trace around and try not to move it. So here's the tricky part. I have to move my hand to go around it. So there's my spoon. It's a little hard to see, but if I move it closer, you can see. There's my spoon. And then I'm going to take my coaster. Do I have room? I do. I've got just the right amount of room for my coaster. I might even move it over a little bit. And I'm going to hold my coaster on there. And I'm going to trace that. Now I have room to fit one more object in here. But I think rather than tracing, maybe I just want to draw something. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a flower myself rather than just trace. So now I have three different objects in the center of my mola. The next step is going to be to trace those in marker because we want to be able to see them but also usually in molas there's black somewhere in there sometimes it's the fabric in the back sometimes it's a paint that they use but there's usually a darker color i'm going to just stand up a little bit so i can see what i'm doing here so you can see what i'm doing so i just traced my coaster and the really cool part about this is even if your lines are a little wiggly, it doesn't really matter because fabric is wiggly. So, now, there you go. So those are my three objects. What else does Mrs. Jones always like on her artwork? That's right, a frame. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna draw a wavy line or a curvy line all the way around. So now I have my set design. So the next part of the design is to do outlines around it. This is the easy part, guys. So I'm going to take my markers and I wanna pick what colors I'd like to use. You can do a pattern. In this one, I did gray and pink. I did yellow and blue around my border. In this one, this is my fancier bird, I did green, blue, yellow, green, blue, yellow, orange inside the little shapes, red and white in the background, and purple and white. So you can pick any type of pattern you'd like to do. So as I'm looking at this, I think I definitely would like my purple. I'm going to start with purple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just decide to go around the flower. All I'm doing is outlining it, kind of like boys and girls. Remember in school when we did the bubble letters and we went around the letters that we wrote? It's the same idea. I'm just putting a bubble around. And then I'm going to also do this around my coaster or my diamond, I should say. Notice that I didn't go on to the border. I stayed off of the border. I guess I, I could go on to the border, but no, I, think I'm, I think I'm not going to. And around the spoon, I'm going to do red because that one's in the middle. Why not? I'm not touching the black line. I'm leaving a space in between my shape and my lines. 
I can do that or I can have them close together. Either way will work. So now I'm going to start with my next set of colors and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put pink around my purple. Now you don't have to do pink and purple. If my lines start to touch now, that's okay. They can have space or they can touch. It's whatever your preference is. But what we want to do is make it super colorful. But I now I want a totally different color. I'm going to go to green to go around my red. And if you guys remember, we just did a color lesson about green and red being color opposites. So now your job is to continue those lines all the way to the border in a pattern. So now that I've got the purple and the pink, now I'm going to do another row of purple. So do you see what I'm doing, boys and girls? I'm creating a pattern. So the pattern around the two side objects, purple and pink, the pattern around the spoon is going to be green and red. And I'm going to keep doing this until there's no more room to add any more lines as I get close to the border. So now I can kind of go under this and look at, look what happens now. I can connect to my flower. So do you see how it's starting to fill in the background? Oh, I don't know if I should have gone down there, but that's okay. This is the fun part of art. You can kind of do whatever you want, right? And if you don't like it, what can you do? Do it again. Do a new one. But we don't get angry. We don't ball it up. We don't throw it away. We don't yell. We just start over. So as you can see, I'm getting really close to my bordered edges. So as I'm getting close to my bordered edges, I'm going to stop once I get there. I'm also holding the colors in my hand that I need so I don't make a mistake and pick up the wrong colors. Okay, so here we go. See how my background is all filled in? So boys and girls, here's your next step. I'm going to actually color this in a little more. I missed that part. So boys and girls, your next step is going to be figuring out what you want to do with the frame. You can pick different colors. I would pick something totally different from your background colors. So for example, I'm going to add yellow. And have it kind of mimic my edge. And I'm just going to do yellow and white at the top. I'm not adding another color because I really like yellow on my border. So I'm going to keep the yellow. Now, as for inside your shapes, you can do anything you want. So if I would like to make the inside of my flower orange, watch what I can do. I'm not allowed to color anything in solid. That's the trick. You have to continue with your marker lines. So as I do the spoon, I'm only going to do the spoon orange and white. I'm not adding any other colors to my spoon because I want the spoon to stand out as its own shape. Do you see what's starting to happen here, boys and girls? See how the objects in the middle are starting to stand out? and so on. So that eventually, when you're finished, you will have a piece that is full like this. All right, boys and girls? So today, you are going to be working on a what? 
a mola. That's right. You're going to be working on a mola. A mola comes from what country? Panama. We see it in all countries in Central America, but it originated in Panama. Boys and girls, I would love to see your work when it's all finished, okay? I hope that you have a great weekend. We've got the weekend coming, Saturday and Sunday. I will see you again when I post on Tuesday. Have a great weekend, boys and girls. Bye. Now bye.